Hey everybody, welcome back to week three, or what? I don't even know what week it is anymore. I don't even know what day it is. COVID, man. Welcome back to online learning. Um, I know that it's a little bit of a bummer to have to be online after just being in the class last week. Don't worry, we'll get to get back into class soon enough. But for what it's worth, we're going to have to endure somewhat. So this week, we're talking about neuromuscular fundamentals. We're going to go over muscle structure uh, muscle joint actions, as well as kind of how we actually send signal from the brain to our muscles and how our muscles contract. So excitation, contraction, and cu- contraction coupling is what that term is called. There's a lot of content this week because it's a full chapter. I'm going to feel like I'm buzzing through it, but the perk of this being online is that you can rewatch it several different times. There's definitely going to be slides that I click over that we're not going to highlight. Um, some of the slides are just there for your background information as well. So if you have the slides printed out as you're going through this, um, doesn't mean the slide's not important. It just means that I'm trying to save you guys time in in your viewing pleasure, if you will. All right. So why do we even care about skeletal muscles? What the heck are skeletal muscles, uh, and what's their functional property? You guys are far enough in this program that you already know this. I don't want to harp on it too much, but essentially, skeletal muscles are going to be the organs, the effector organs that are going to actually translate nervous system into movement, right? So muscle contraction produces force that actually moves joints. So because of the insertion in the origin or origin insertion of a muscle group, it's going to span a joint most times. So we'll actually, when it moves, when that muscle either extends or contracts, it will actually pull on the more distal segment of the bone and cause a translocation or change its position within three-dimensional space. Not only do muscles um, provide some level of movement or motor function, they also provide protection, stability of the joints, posture, all those wonderful good things, right? There's, there's 600 muscles. You guys know this type of stuff from anatomy and physiology. There's a metric crap ton worth of muscles. We know that there's a ton of pairs of muscles, right? What's really, what you really need to know is that muscles like to work in groups. Muscles like to span joints in groups and have cooperative action. So they like to have this concept of aggregate muscle action. And if you think about one great example is, is the quadriceps, right? So the quadriceps get to span the knee joint and kind of merge into the patellar tendon and are able to work together to translocate or move the uh, tibia and fibula through a, a plane of motion. These slides are really going to be, this next like five slides, I can't remember how many it is, are really going to be for you guys um, in trying to come up with nomenclature and start start remembering those rules for how muscles are named certain things and really starting to not just learn the Latin, but really getting the uh, the connections going between everything here. So muscles are named due to a couple different things. One, visual appearance. Two, anatomical location. And three, function. Makes sense, right? Why would we name something random if we can name it logically? Example, shape, deltoid. What does delt mean? Three, rhomboid. What does romb mean? Right? Size, gluteus maximus, it's going to tell us what muscle it is because of the size of it, maximus. Uh, teres minor, you can look at it and see which one the teres minor is based on the size of it, smaller. Number of divisions, tri means three, triceps, brachii. And then the direction of its fibers, fibers. I don't know why I said fibers, that's weird. Um, External, abdominal, oblique. So oblique doesn't mean that it's going to be running in a perfectly straight line or a normal line. It's going to be coming at an angle. Another great one to remember is the location. So rectus femoris. Rectus actually means straight. Femoris means it's running straight along the femur. Perfect. Points of attachment, another great one. Coracobrachialis is going to tell you that it's inserting or it's, it's, it's originating on the coracoid process right? Action, erect or spinae, erect or spinae means that it's going to keep the spine erect. Supinator means that it's going to be creating a supination motion, which is this motion right here. Um, Well, I lied. Jesus, I'm an idiot. I was looking at pronator as I was doing that. Supination is palms forward, pronation is palms down. 
So action in shape would be that next one, pronator quadratus. It's going to cause pronation, so it's going to cause palms down. It's called quadratus because it is shaped like a quadrilateral. Kind of cool, right? Um, there's also mnemonic devices to help you remember some of these different types of muscles. It will tell you, like, use these as you're, as you're going through the muscles to come up with sentences or, or quirky little sayings to help you remember these things. Next slide, we're going to be focusing on muscle terminology. And by next slide, I mean next slide deck or next YouTube video lecture because I'm an idiot and I don't know how to talk, right? Next one, muscle terminology. Let's get through it.